How has the entire industry changed, in your opinion, too, in terms of TV writing? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten easier? Like you say, you can have shows that are a little more diversified, a little more realistic. Well, yeah, you could go take more chances now. I mean, look, the, we're on TV right now, and people are watching it on their computer. And if you're a certain age or younger, you don't even have a TV. Like, or unless you have a gigantic TV, which you just, well, you watch movies, right? So all the home TV screens got really, really big, and the regular TV screens got super small, you keep in your pocket. And I have a feeling everything's converging on TV, but TV's got a million different choices. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know one television writer who's not thinking, boy, if I could just get a show on cable, or FX, you know, you look at what FX is doing with their shows, so interesting and so idiosyncratic. If you're Louis C.K., like, you had no choice. You had no choices. Anything you did was going to be rejected until sort of somebody FX says, okay, well, here's some money. Do a show that you think is interesting. And that's what he does. And I think that's, that's what's happened to business that's good, which is that it's gotten really super fragmented. I mean, I used to, we used to walk in on Friday morning after Cheers. Cheers was on Thursday nights at 9. We'd walk in on Friday morning, and the assistant would have written our writing and our share on the board every morning. And that was always like 30 million people or 32 million people. There was always an enormous number. And, um, <coughs> and we just treated it like that was normal. And um, now you look, there's you know, five networks, 700 channels practically. Um, half the people in America, it seems to me, at any given moment are watching a Real Housewives show of some kind. Um, and then there's this and people watching this. And if you're a certain age, you're like, well, okay, maybe I'll watch this new show on Netflix. Maybe I'll watch a new show on Amazon. Amazon's coming up in these shows. Maybe I'll stream a movie. Maybe I'll you get a the million choices. The choices are endless these right. days. Yeah. Anything in particular, too, that you think is is great TV right now? I'm well, assuming that you don't think The Real Housewives is, is great TV. Well, maybe I'm wrong you there. know, I don't, like, I, you know what I really think about The Real Housewives? I think it's, like, weirdly mean. Like, everybody's mean all the time. It's, like, so much they are really anger. Mean. They're I so totally mean. Agree like, with you. like, it isn't like they're mean. It isn't like they're mean because they're competing with each other. It's just like they're mean because they're always fighting over what you said. No, you said that. And it's all strange. Look, I don't, I mean, I can't imagine a better half hour TV show right now than Family, um, than Modern Family. And, and, and that's not, that should be a surprise to nobody. If you look at the names of the people who are doing that show, I mean, every single one of those people, the top five or six people, I know, I know a lot of them are like immensely talented individually. So if you had just told me, here are the names of these people and they're gonna do a show together, I mean, I don't really even know what the show's about. I can tell you that show's going to be really great because those are people who have enormous experience and they're very, very funny. They're incredibly gifted writers, each one individually. And um, so that's like, for me, when people say, oh, a modern family came out of nowhere. No, it totally didn't. Look at the credits. Those people are, I mean, they're super gifted. So all you really need to do if you're head of a network is just, just, just find six more people that are super gifted and tell them to do a TV show and get out of their way.